All right. Do our judges have questions? Um, I, I have a question. Uh, excellent talk. Thank you. I, I certainly learned something. Um, <laughs> I was wondering, you, you did touch upon a yawning in certain hours of the day, which I, I thought was very interesting, but we, we also seem to yawn when we're bored. Um, do you think it has something to do with why people don't find insects interesting, or is there, <laughs> is there some connection there? Yes, you bring, up, you bring up an interesting point. I think that's a unique Thank insight you. you have there into uh, uh, the functioning of this mechanism. Perhaps this was maybe, it, it filled a different niche in the hunter-gatherer uh, feeding strategy regime. For example, hunting and gathering are both high energy activities, but perhaps yawning complemented them as a low energy activity because it can be done when you're simply sitting or standing around, and therefore when they were bored or tired, it would have been more advantageous. We will, we will explore that further. What could be then the evolutionary um, rationale behind the common etiquette practice of covering your mouth when you yawn? Ah, uh, yes. We've, we've considered this at length in our lab. Um, and I think you'll find that if you, if you widen your view outside of the typical Western uh, societal etiquette of covering your mouth while you yawn, you'll find that um, similar to other eating practices such as burping after a meal, you have a range of different etiquettes across different societies, and it's simply chance that this evolved to be the one that we in our society condemn. It could easily have been, you know, something else like putting your elbows on the table. So, so very interesting talk, and I think there's some interesting implications of your work, um, as I'm sure you would likely agree. Uh, one of the things that I've most frequently noticed is my students yawning in 8 a.m. classes, and I, based on your explanation, I should take this to mean that they are not tired uh, or sleep-deprived or bored, uh, but in fact are asking, based on hunger, to have class outside. Yes. Uh, in fact, I, I might speak to you afterwards about a future collaboration in which you test that in a controlled environment. You could also see if the yawning is abated by bringing in snacks. So that was fantastic. Um, you gave this wonderful explanation about how yawning evolved in the past. I'm wondering if you had any predictions about the future of yawning. Will it eventually go extinct? I actually think that there might be the potential for a certain resurgence of this ancient uh, behavior. Uh, as many of you may know, more uh, I think approximately 80% of the world's population today does consume insects, and there are certain initiatives uh, here. There's one group of Harvard students that has a startup that's trying to get people to eat more insects. And seeing that we are facing many looming crises of food shortages, it might actually be advantageous for us in the future to re-adopt this practice. I would certainly advocate so. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Emma Cowell.